Good morning. Well, I thought before I was to um, check on my base for the day, I went to a really quick tutorial that I know so many of you have been asking for, and that is a hooded eye tutorial. Um, I'm going to keep it, but still, I think in the essence of how we're all feeling with our applications at the moment is keeping it really natural, fresh, glowy, and gorgeous. So I'm going to be showing you how you would work uh, around, like let's say a hooded eye, something like that, or you feel like it's kind of hanging the lid. I'm going to show you how you would work around that. So first things first, I'm going to get into some skin. I have already um, use hyaluronic moisturizer I'm um, sorry hyaluronic serum all over my skin and now I'm going to go into a moisturizer I'm just going to use the um, magic cream light by Charlotte Tilbury this is a bit more of an expensive moisturizer um, good more for the kit But still, um, yeah, I would say Ember Lease can be a cheaper alternative for that which is 35 this is like 55 60 I think Okay, so I think first things first in regards to hooded eyes, I am a huge supporter of making sure using eye creams. I think a lot of the time, this is a really nice one, this is the Revital um, Lift one um, by L'Oreal. I'm using this just, it's got a cooling um, end on it, like a metal piece, which is really great for depuffing. Um, I have to be really focused on using eye creams on myself because I am of English, Irish, and German descent, which means I've got very pink skin, which means that uh, I naturally get quite crepey and um, my skin's quite thin. So I need to make sure that I'm really kind of getting that protection in there and keeping it hydrated because otherwise it'll look quite old and textured quite quickly. I'm a very big supporter of making sure you're using eye creams. It's the one thing I think Australian women aren't so great with. And I think it's the one area that they're kind of really showing off um, age the quickest. Beautiful. So I'll let that sit down. It's going to be a really natural eye look, um, but just showing you how to contour and lift the eyes up. So I'm going to go into my skin first. Um, first things first, you can't, regardless if it's winter, overcast, rainy, this is ultraviolet. This is queen screen. I personally like this one better for my skin. I feel like it gives my skin that extra glow that I really like. I've got naturally drier skin. It gives the skin a really lovely sheen. So good if you've got dry skin and need to use sunscreen. It's actually a really great step just in terms of making your skin look really um, fresh and dewy. But obviously hugely important, it's SPF 50, which we should all be wearing. Down the neck is backs of the hands for me. I am very preventative of old woman hands. I do not want age spots on there. So, okay, let's get into the skin. I'm not gonna use a primer today because it is a day off. I wanna just kind of keep it kind of fresh um, and I'm not looking for longevity as such. So I'm gonna go in with Light Wonder by Charlotte Tilbury. I have been using this one heavily. This is in the shade four fair. I have been using this quite heavily over the past few months, I do really like it. It is very sheer. It gives me the coverage that I need for a day off without it looking heavy or cakey. It's initially, I really didn't like it because I used to like to wear a full coverage and for longer days or events, I do like to wear a fuller coverage because I know it's gonna last well on me. But this is great. And you can see it's got this really beautiful fresh finish. Gorgeous. Now, another reason why I'm doing this tutorial is because finally, so um, if you've been following our journey, you know that I stock Eye of Horus. Eye of Horus are a beautiful brand, Australian owned, developed in Byron Bay. Um, they are wonderful. They're vegan, cruelty free. They are really about the environment. Their packaging is all paper. They do as much as they can. Um, I know their lipsticks are made of paper um, packaging. Um, they do as much as they can for the environment. So I really support that. But more importantly, I would not, and as you know, I'm very much about performance makeup I wouldn't stock a product if it wasn't performance driven I need to make sure that if I'm applying it on clients that it looks amazing so they've just released some concealers which this has been a long time coming uh, particularly for someone like me I really struggle to find brands that um, are comprehensive in their range that are available um, you know in the Australian market to stock and use um, and I stumbled upon our Horace a few years ago and I've been stocking them ever since and I love them this is the, um, it's called the triple bio triple C concealer. I'm going to try it out and use the shade alabaster light to start with. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I'll go alabaster light. I'm just going to put small amounts on under the eyes. So first feel, this is literally the first time I've used it. 
I can see. So it's a vitamin C driven um, concealer, which is all about brightening, which is a really good thing that you want for the skin in itself. But also great if you're using concealers really in the areas that probably need the most brightening, which is under the eyes and around that T-zone area. So it's lovely. It's got nice grip to it. It's got good, um, what I mean by grip is it sits on the skin. It doesn't sit like bitty. Um, I think it's what's going to be good about it is it's not overly emollient. So it's not going to be really um, thin and run away on you, which is what you want. You want something with a little bit of hold under the eyes, particularly if you find you get transfer. Yeah, lovely. I think it's really great for girls that like a really natural finish. Nothing too crazy. I'm sure you could build it up if you used a different tool. I like to use fingers under my eyes. But if I was going more of a fuller coverage, now I'm using the shade up from that. This is called um, Sand. I'm just using this on my nose because I get quite red on there. So yeah, if I wanted to get a fuller finish, I would use a brush. Oh, this is nice. This is sitting really lovely. I think the nose is the test always for a concealer, ones that kind of grip on that really nicely. I know so many of you have that issue with concealers and having that red on your nose breaking through, but that's sitting really lovely. Mm. Eee! I'm excited about this because, like I said to you, I've been really struggling. I've still got a bit of dermatitis on my chin. I've been really struggling to find concealers that I want to stock that work really, really well. So lovely. Okay, from here, I'm going to quickly finish off my skin. I don't want to, um, I'm going to talk about the theory behind hooded eyes while I quickly do my skin. This is a skin approach that I do with you guys all the time. So if there's any questions regarding what I'm doing right now that um, I'm not answering because I'm talking about the hooded eyes, just go back into my previous tutorials. You'll see that they're all there. So hooded eyes. A lot of girls get, I think, get really down about their hooded eyes. They, I hear this in masterclasses all the time about how they think this is a real negative thing. Um, you know, it's their worst spot. They really hate it. I just have to really be very, like, in masterclasses and when I have clients one-on-one, -on -one, I'm so supportive of saying, you know, regardless of whatever it is, it's still your face. And there's lots of things I don't like about my body, but I'm not focused on how much I hate it and how much I wish I didn't have it. I'm focused more on, okay, what are the things that I do like about my face and how do I want to enhance them? And then also, if I don't like something about my face, how can I change it? Or how can I manipulate it, shading using light and dark to take the attention away from it? So for me with hooded eyes, it's all about showing off areas of your eye that you like instead. So I'm going to quickly just put some blush on. This is Torrid by... NARS. I do bloody love this. So I keep on traveling with it and it kind of always has a bit of a blowout. I've said to you time and time and time again how much I love using liquids when I'm wanting a really fresh finish. When I don't use liquids and I use powders, it naturally texturizes the face. And I feel like with liquids, it just gives this beautiful, natural kind of skin-like finish on the, um, on the skin and makes your skin look so much more hydrated, which is awesome. Just going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Wand. Whoopsie. Now I'm just finishing off the skin. I obviously am looking for that really fresh glowy finish, but then I want it to last. So I'm going in with a translucent press this time. This is the Fenty Invisimat. Bloody love this powder. This is good for girls on the go that want something that's really minimal on the skin. You can't really see it, but just sets it beautifully and gives this kind of, it kind of blurs the skin. It's a hot favorite for a couple of big beauty people and I am obsessed with it. So I just like to set the areas that I know I'm gonna get oily. And you don't want light all over the face. Like obviously I've got this, this, this and here. It's nice to break it up by setting elsewhere. So you're just not looking like a big giant shine ball. Okay, let's go into eyes. So I'm not going to get it complicated. I'm just going to keep it quite simple. I'm going to go in with Champagne by Charlotte Tilbury. This is a really lovely little um, cream. It's Eyes to Mesmerize. This is in the shade Champagne and it's all about light. So you can see it's kind of just really fresh and and sheeny, sheeny seems to be the word of the day. 
sheeny. I mean by sheeny, I mean it's thin in texture. So it's giving that really beautiful like glossiness without it being too thick, which I know so many of you like that finish. I know so many of you, when I talk to you guys, you really hate that kind of... Um, that thickness of product on the skin. So I'm going in one of my favorite pencils. This is the Eye of Horus. Um, we stock these guys. I use this pencil on pretty much most clients uh, every time I do their makeup. This is in the color Bronze Amulet and I really love it. So what I'm gonna simply do is apply. Now, when you've got a hooded eye, the hood comes down pretty much more, it's over your lid, but it's really prominent here. When you have a hooded eye, it means that your eyes feel a lot smaller than they are. When I have girls coming in for masterclasses, I hear a lot of the time, I've got small eyes. It's actually not true. They have big eyes a lot of the time. It's because the hoodedness of the eye is squashing down on your eyes, which makes you feel like you've got small eyes. So the focus needs to be on lift, lifting and contouring. So we always want to focus on having shimmery inner corners or bright inner corners. And it doesn't have to be a shimmer, it just has to be a lighter color and focusing these matte kind of lifted darker contour tones on the outer area. Now, if you don't have heaps of lid space, you don't have to do an eyeliner. If you do, and you still have a bit of a hood, get in there and lift it with some eyeliner. Eyeliner is a great one to start with initially. So now I'm getting a small brush and I'm just smushing it. And by smushing it and going up that direction, I'm essentially putting a contour on the areas that are quite heavy and overhang on my eyes. So I'm blending them out. Now, a big one, if you do have hooded eyes and you transfer a lot around this area or your mascara transfers, etc., I would use an eye primer because I'm going for a much more natural look. I haven't gone for one. Um, an eye primer that would be really great for more of a natural finish would be the NARS. Um, they're really great because they're um, quite sheer and thin. For people with hardcore oiliness, I would go for the Paint Pots by MAC. They're a really good heavy duty ones. Okay, so as you can see now, I'm starting to contour and I'm going in this direction. If you have hoods, this is a really important part. You want to get, in this case, a dirty brush. Sorry about that. I'm going to use the Nudes of New York palette by Maybelline. This is a really great all-rounder palette. You can see there's lots of different tone. I think that's the biggest plus when people do a palette is they provide different colors in there. You don't want to just go ones with all pinks or ones with all golds. You want something that's got the variety in there because you're never going to wear the same outfit. So it's always important to have... That. Now, when it comes to contouring, you always should be using matte colors. I'm in this case going to do this color here. It's a bit more of a flatter brown. I'm going to start with it first and I'm just going to punch it lightly on top of that area just there that I put the, um, the, um, brown, the brown eyeliner. And now I'm going to go in with a different brush. You can either clean off that brush with a tissue or a, like a, a towel or you can go for another brush. I have the privilege of having a few brushes. Now I'm going to go for a bit more warmer because I'm a, um, a green eyed girl. I can, and if you're blue, or anyone can use sort of these reddier undertones, but it's a bit lighter than that brown. And now what I'm going to do is really build that up and out. Now clean your brush off if it's too much pigment, because at this stage, it's not about how much you put on, it's how we blend. So what I want to do now is focus, I'm trying to get this all done while Obi has a nap. And I'm just starting to sachet this color like a windscreen wiper in this area, lifting up and contouring the heaviness of that hooded eye. Focus on your blend. If you're worried about how much you've got on there, clean off your brush. A clean brush for contouring is really, really great because it means you're not pushing more product up and making your eyes feel a lot heavier and smokier. We're wanting it to look quite natural, this look. Just going through that crease lightly now with a very, very clean brush just to soften all those edges off. If you're feeling like it's a little bit heavier still, you can go back in there with that um, first shimmery eyeshadow and just go over the areas that you don't want the dark to be on. So I'm just going to soften that liner out just there and just here. So I'm focusing my lift in that spot just there. Mascara is a really important one. Now, because it's a day natural look, I'm not going to put any product underneath my eye because I think that would make it look more smokier and more contoured. And I just want to focus on the lift on that outer area. So I'm just going to go in with an eye primer. I'm obsessed with this product. This is the Marc Jacobs Eyelash Primer. I'm going to let that dry. While I let that dry, I'm going to go in my lips. This is Oak Lip Liner by MAC.
I'm now going to go in with Peach. This is a, um, one of the bio lipsticks by Ive Horus. I love these colors. They really sit nice and thin on the skin, um, on the lips. They don't look overly lipsticky. Really nice. So I've contoured with that darker color, make my lips look bigger. Then I've gone in with that peach and look just for the sake of a chill day session, going in with a lip gloss or a lip balm. This is the go-to one. And this is just going to give me that gloss that I like. That's still looking after the lip health. And last but not least, the most important part of anything, that's why I've focused on using a primer on my eyelashes. I want to get the lift up. So we want to be focusing our attention this way always. So when we're putting on mascara with hooded eyes, you want to be pushing in the direction where those hoods are because essentially this is going to lift that area. So you can see I'm drawing my attention up towards the hood. So in and then up. Just like that. Now I've just recorded this in 15 minutes and in real time. And I've also spoken the whole time. If I was doing this look on myself, I've, you know, I can get it done in literally five minutes. Super fresh, easy skin. You can do it really quickly at home. You don't have to do all the steps, but really the whole idea of hooded eyes is essentially it's a heavier, broader area on the eyes that we want to like make smaller or lift so using darker shades on it always mattes and kind of contouring that area and lifting is really important a really big takeaway from this is be careful about how dark you go too high so you want to keep it as close to your lashes as possible which is what i've done with the eyeliner and as you saw i put a little bit of the darker on that sort of eyeliner area and then i blended it through with a softer matte contour color i don't want to go all the way up with a really dark color because that's when you sort of been punched in the face that kind of look we've all been there <laughs> so that's how easy it is a really soft finish look um, I'm gonna quickly finish off with a setting spray this is the Charlotte Tilbury one and that's it just a really fresh gorgeous look that you can wear to an event you can wear out for lunch um, this is obviously going to the shops to buy a steamer and some scales <laughs> um, but regardless this is a really fresh beautiful look but focused towards hooded eyes and how to lift the eye shape up Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.